Buhari also abolished food subsidies in Nigerian universities and thereby prioritized the introduction of malnutrition into universities. Kayabe Shoinka, the renowned journalist and author of Diplomatic Baggage, Mosada Nigeria, the Deco Story, published in 1994, wrote, unquote, The Buhari government, in prosecuting its war on corruption, gave the National Security Organization, NSO, unprecedented powers of arrest and detention. The regime promulgated the State Security Detention of Persons Decree No. 2 of 1984, which gave the NSO the power to detain anyone suspected to be a security risk indefinitely. All forms of freedom were restricted and there was vagrant deprivation of fundamental human rights. Decree 2, 1984, the State Detention of Persons Decree, was Buhari's sword of Damascus. Under this decree, journalists were hunted and jailed. More than a dozen press houses were closed down. Beko Lansom Kute, Taisha Lari and Haruna Ademo were all jailed under this decree. Labor unions and professional associations were proscribed and banned. The Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, the National Association of Resident Doctors, National Association of Nigerian Students, and the Academic Staff Union of Universities ASO. The list was endless. The impression that was created in the minds of people in the time of Buhari, especially Buhari and Idiabo, was that this is the time to be sober, the time not to smile. The Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, boycotted all proceedings of Buhari's military tribunals. The was the National Security Organization, NSO, Nigeria's first secret police service, which was on hand to intimidate, harass, and detain protesters and demonstrators, students, lecturers, critics and activists, and civil servants who dared embark on strikes. By October 1984, Buhari had retrenched 200,000 Nigerian civil servants. On the 15th of April 1985, Buhari announced the expulsion and deportation from Nigeria of more than 700,000 foreigners, especially from Ghana and other West African nations. It continues to be economically and politically disrupted by the mass movement of workers expelled from Nigeria. Almost 900,000 have already returned to Ghana alone. Sometimes the convoy stretches for 300 miles. Many workers had to sell all their possessions to get this far. Taxi and truck drivers are accused of charging outrageous prices, but many workers believe that staying behind in Nigeria meant prison or even worse. And they are killing many people. If you don't go, your life is at risk. Whether you like it or not, you should leave. The deadline of May 10th was set. All illegal immigrants must leave Nigeria in less than four weeks. It was a massive exodus, but it was not the first time this will occur. In April 1985, six Nigerians were convicted and condemned to death for drug trafficking by Buhari's Special Military Tribunal, most of them women. Lasukomi Awolala, Oladele Omoshebi, Jimmy Adebayo, Mrs. Sidikat Tairi, Miss Shola Oguntayo, and Gladys Iyama. Gladys Iyama, locked at the federal maximum security prisons in Kirikiri, was a crippled mother of two paraplegic children and was the first woman in the history of Nigeria to be sentenced to death by firing squad. The Buhari government knew the implication of executing a paralyzed mother of two and the sentence was secretly approved. The Gloria Ocon case was rife. In 1985, Gloria Ocon was arrested at the Aminukano International Airport on drug trafficking allegations. The case was traced to persons in government who provided security support for their couriers. Gloria Ocon was said to have died in detention. The cause of the death was kept secret. To date, Gloria Ocon is a mystery dating back to Buhari's days in power.